All right, so today we are going to be making some strap hinges. A friend of mine and Christopher's is going to be coming later today, and he is a woodworker. He's into hand tool woodworking, and he's building a little shop, cool little shop, and it's going to have double doors on the front, uh, very similar to the, the doors that I'm going to be building for my own shop. The doors are, the whole opening six foot wide, so there'll be two three foot wide doors. And uh, he wants some hand forged strap hinges. Um, he's not really sure what he wants though in the way of design, just something a little more, a little uh, fancier than a straight untapered strap. So this is, this is my friend Christopher Schwartz from Cross Timbered, Crossed Timbers Forge on Instagram. And uh, he's a, another local blacksmith and fabricator. And he is working with me on this. This is actually, this is technically his job that I'm helping with. So, so we're gonna do a strap similar to this in shape with a finial closer to a mix of these two. Uh, the only difference we're gonna, we're gonna do is these, we're gonna have is these hinges have rolled barrels and we're going to do a wrapped and forge welded barrel so the barrel of the hinge will be a little taller it won't be quite as narrow maybe not obviously not this skinny but just as far as this end that's what i'm thinking where you let the barrel where the where you let the metal flare out beyond the barrel oh who is that Who is that? <laughs> what is with the tongue? <laughs> Who's that? Who are these people? <laughs> Charlotte, you are funny. So we're in the shop now and we are fixing to figure out our stock length. We've decided on a hinge style, the stock that we're going to start with. And we've even got the carpenter here who's Hinges, we're making hinges for his shop. So this is Trey, and uh, he is, he's gonna make sure that we, we do it right. Get still. Oh, there you go, thank you. 26, so 52. All right, heavy blows. Right? Yep. First thing to do is make the scarf. And if I was doing mild steel, normally when I'm doing a wrought iron, I'll do a longer, thinner scarf. For mild steel, I'll do a thicker, shorter scarf. And I'll knock the corners in like that, and then bevel the edge. And then we're gonna, or I'm gonna make a, a 90 degree corner and I'm gonna take about maybe five inches. Move into the second anvil because it has a better corner. I don't care about this eye being perfectly round because I'm going to drift it. Yep. If I was really good, I'd be able to do all this prep work in one heat, but I'm not that good. So now I'm going to put my drift in. I'm using a half inch drift because I'm going to use a half inch pencil. So now I'm just going to do a little bit more shaping 
around this drift. I'm liking that. Looks good. Okay. And there we are. We are ready to weld. When forge welding, you're getting the temperatures way up close to burning. You're getting close, especially with mild steel. Well, wrought iron has a high welding temperature too, but it welds a lot easier. But, um, so I want, I'm actually coating, and not all blacksmiths will do this. I kind of get carried away with flux, but I'm actually going to coat the whole area that's going to be under a welding heat because that will help protect the surfaces from burning. It won't, it won't just help the weld, it'll protect the surfaces of the surrounding metal Got it. from burning. And I'm going to don gloves because there's going to be flux going everywhere. We're going to weld on this one. One of the, one of the best rules that was taught to me, I heard it from Mark Asprey, is it must look wet to weld. If it doesn't look wet, it's not going to weld. Water hits. Punching from the wrong side. Ah, I knew I was gonna do that. Here, Christopher. Hope it's not hot. things I want to do though that my hole that I punched is not quite big enough to suit me it's closed up a little bit and I'm gonna give it a very slight countersink and that our rivet will get peened into that Somebody told me, another blacksmith, forging is fast, tweaking is forever. That's the one good thing about woodworking. At some point or another, you're going to run out of wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lightly. That's good. Hang on. That was not a good strike. Okay, go. Enough. Yep. Hang on. Sorry. You good? Go. Go. Well, I flubbed that up good. Go. Hit. Hit. Mm. Went too far. It's my fault. Hit. Hit. Hit, hit. Go, go, go. Whoa! I thought, I thought I missed some up. I don't understand why that's a little bit short, but oh well. Hey, can't see from my nope. house. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work here. <laughs> nope. Go. Nope.
So what we were doing there, hitting it while it's fairly cold, we're not actually trying to move a lot of material. We're planishing. And planishing is smoothing. Yeah, okay. So I was, and because I didn't trust either one of us to hit accurate, accurately enough, I was using the surface of the anvil as my as, a as my flattener. Yeah. Got it. I just need to not burn the one I've got. <laughs> So I have finished tapering the strap out and I wanted it wider back here and so I spread it with the peen of the hammer um, so that I could get a nice transition. This, this again, this inch and a half by quarter that this eye is made of is our original stock. So lapping it around and welding it and then just letting that spread gave us this shape here and then we've tapered it out from there. Now, I'm using this anvil, which is nice and flat, to flatten the back of the hinge to make sure that it will sit tightly to the door that it's mounted to. At least that's the idea. And what I'm trying to do at this point is I'm trying to finish sections of the hinge so that I can just work my way down. This area is finished so I don't have to heat it again and I'll just work my way down. Now, do you see how I've got one leg a little bit longer than the other? Uh -huh. So I'll fix that by drawing the other one out. Ah, that wasn't supposed to happen. If it weren't for a few miss hits, I wasn't in such a big hurry. Oh, I like that. Oh, I, I, that definitely added the, the dimension to it. Yep. We've got our pin made. We've got the top tapered a little bit and uh, you'll see why later. So this is a half inch round pin and that'll get forge welded in. So right now what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to make the corner. So we're making another eye just about exactly like I made before. So I've got the eye made, and I'm going to drive that pin in there, and it's going to be a tight fit. It's going to kind of open the eye up a little bit. We're going to flux it, and then we're going to weld the pin in. So this pointy end that we made earlier makes it easy to drive the pin in, like so. And I want it to stick out just a little bit, like so. Now we're going to go ahead and flux everything. Well, hopefully that's welded good enough. So, um, Christopher, yep. I am looking here to make sure that when this, when the barrel is sitting flat on the anvil, that this space under here is parallel. Right. Between that pin and the face of the anvil. Right. But then to make sure that it's square this way, it's more eyeballing. I mean, you can't, there's not really anything else you can do. to hit the tool. <laughs> Go ahead. I need some water, son.
All right, flip it. Not over the Pritchell. Do you mind that little bit of backward curve? Oh, that's nice. Pritchell. So there we have it. We've got our finished hinge. We've got our pintle and our strap. And the two go together and make a hinge. That's a very nice, satisfying fit there. The forge welded eye came out really good. Um, it's hard to say which was the most uh, challenging part. I would say actually the cutting was one of the things that challenged me the most. Splitting splitting for the fleur-de-lis and splitting for this. Uh, cutting is something that's super, super simple, yet it should be an easy blacksmithing operation, but it's not something I've done a lot of. So splitting, kind of it kind of gave me a run for my money, but I think it turned out pretty well. I can't wait to see these mounted on Trey's doors. I've got the background music, <laughs> whether you like it or not. <laughs>